let's see. Let's go ahead and play some City Skylines today. It'll only be a couple hours, so it shouldn't be too long, and then I'll get to editing that new Sonic video. All right. Okay, how long have I been playing? Oh man, I know the hours can really go by playing this game, but wow. Okay, let me go ahead and start editing that Sonic video now after I get something to eat and catch up on the news and yeah. So it seems that Sonic Superstars has fallen short on its expected sales from Sega due to certain things like competition from Super Mario Brothers release, Spider-Man 2, and the fact that there was some not so great reception to the game. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the game, especially since I'm a big Sonic fan. I did pick it up day one, but I wanted to kind of give some time to play it and give some of my thoughts about what my experience was on that. So let's, let's take a look and see, is it really something that you should play? should pick up or is this something that you should probably pass for now or forever let's take a look so is sonic superstars a game that you should pick up and play i'm gonna say yes but i'm gonna put a big old asterisk on that and say it depends on what you want out of the game and what price you're willing to pay for that game. I'm going to go through different categories and tell you a little bit about what I what my impressions were of the game and ultimately I want you to make up your own mind about if you want to play the game or not or if you want to pick it up or if you already picked it up of course leave a comment below let me know what you think about it. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? All of these are just opinions. These are these are opinions okay that's it's our level of enjoyment of the game. It's our expectations of the game. Are you a newer Sonic fan? Are you an old school Sonic fan like myself? You know, that's that's the great thing about all this is nobody is really right or wrong. The only thing really is subjectively, you know, about what our opinions are. That being said, the sound. Let's dive a little bit into the sound and music and everything like that. So this one's kind of a big, a big issue that some people have had with this game and I would say you know what a lot of the stages have really catchy music music has always been a big big factor in a Sonic game and a successful Sonic game and I think that it does a good job on uh, specific levels that uh, that really kind of bring out a unique flavor of the level that being said people like to compare this game on a couple different levels to Sonic 4 and saying, hey, it's episode three of Sonic 4. Now, if you are not sure about why this is important or what even is Sonic 4. So Sonic 4 came out a few years ago. I would say almost a decade ago at this point, at least. And it was kind of controversial because it was pretty much trying to be, especially the title, Sonic 4, a continuation after Sonic 3, Sonic 3 Knuckles, Sonic CD, those classic Sonic games. It changed the art style completely. It, the physics were very different, and a lot of people would say were uh, inferior to the original games. And the music kind of took on a faux Sega Genesis type music, which it was very divisive, honestly. I Some people like it, some people did not like it. I'm kind of in the camp of it was not my favorite, um, I didn't really like it, especially if you compare it to something like, again, Classic Sonic or even something like Sonic Mania that came out, which again is a big, big callback to 2D Sonic games, but also did some a lot of unique stuff 
and the music itself really felt like it pulled back to around the Sonic CD style, early mid 90s. There is a lot of music in this game that sounds like it was pulled right from Sonic 4 with that, that pseudo Genesis kind of sampling, so to speak. Uh, so those ones I felt like were, were kind of weaker in, in my opinion. Some of them are, are good, but generally the boss music, things like that, it, the, the, the menu music, just people hear it and they're like, this is Sonic 4 and it brings back bad memories. So, uh, yeah, if, if it came out and Sonic 4 never existed and this music came out, would people like it better? I don't know, but that was kind of a, a downer for me. That's how I feel about the sound design. The, I mean, some of the, the level tracks are really good. Uh, Sonic doesn't talk, which is fine. I know some people don't, don't like that, but that's fine. So, level design. So, they, they definitely tried some new things with the level design, some certain new aspects that they you know introduce in the, the beginning and later on and i i like to say that uh, most of it is is most of it is uh great i would say pretty good level design i think it's it's very in line with some some of the really good sonic games is it super memorable on a lot of stages no it's pretty people people been describing it as mid this whole game is mid I would say level design is mostly inoffensive. There are some memorable, again, some memorable levels. I feel like the levels that have the memorable music also generally have the memorable level design. Not sure why that is, but that's just how I feel. I have to say, there's one of my biggest pet peeves about the levels is, so with, with classic Sonic games, I like to like, you know, jump around and explore, and sometimes you hit spikes. Yeah, sometimes you hit enemies and whatnot. But the pits of death, the instant kill, bottom of the screen, where you hit it and there's you just die. I feel like that just happens way too much in this game. I've, I've found pits of death way too often. And again, that harkens back to some of the games like Sonic 4. And honestly, there was a couple of Sonic Advance stages that were like that and I did not like that. But... I don't know, I just, I know that it's, you know, you have to be careful on certain stages with platforming, that's totally fine, but just, I, that's something that I've always disliked with Sonic, classic Sonic games, is the pit of death, is falling to your death, and, and, you know, because I always like to explore, you know, even if you, you get to a corner or you get to a place where there's, you gotta go back, that's fine, but to de the instant death, even when there's no lives, it just, it sucks. <laughs> I don't know where the better way to put it. It's just, it, it just, it's not fun to me. That being said, um, as far as level design as well, one of the ways of going from stage to stage when you're uh, jumping back into the game, it's very reminiscent of Sonic Generations, where you have uh, the platforming style. You're Sonic, and you're going from the different levels uh, back and forth kind of like a map in a way but not really they're just platforms uh, that's kind of that's kind of neat you don't have to use that too you can kind of go back and forth as well and cycle between levels once you get in there but um, interesting callback I think that that was kind of a neat idea uh, it wasn't wasn't completely original again Sonic generations did this and I thought that implementation was really good because there was things that unlocked progressively that as you go through and some of the uh, rival battles and things like that were there I, I like that this it didn't really serve any of that it just was going from stage to stage and allowed you to, to kind of visually choose what level you want to go into so it was fine it was fine controls let's jump right into controls 
Is it a hundred percent like the classic Sonic games? Mostly, most hundred percent. No, there are certain things that are different, like Knuckles Glide and and whatnot. But I would say for classic Sonic fans, it's pretty much spot on. Uh, I've I haven't had any major issues with the physics of the game. It handles really well. They did a good job with that. It's not like Sonic Four in that aspect. Um, again, people compare it to Sonic Four in the controls aspect. I think it's fine. I think it's really good. Now let's talk about the boss fights. Boss fights are something that has kind of defined Sonic games in general. Classic Sonic games, newer Sonic games. This one, I, I kind of feel like in general the boss fights kind of fell short versus some of the older boss fights. They have the mid-level boss fights and you have the, you know, the Robotnik boss fights. And I feel like there was too much emphasis on hitting the boss once and then waiting and then being able to hit them again versus older Sonic bosses which again some people they think were too easy that makes sense if you're able to hit them over and over and over again and get the boss fights out of the way I thought that was fine especially again Sonic Sonic 1 through Knuckles and even Mania uh, that's totally fine I prefer that In this one it's like you beat you you, you, you hit them and then you gotta wait or you gotta you gotta transition to a different part of the level and try to hit him again. I felt like this artificially this artificially uh, padded the boss fights. I didn't think it added anything. Mostly, I kind of found it annoying. And then the main storyline boss was just was just frustrating. Um, and again, I'm not the best Sonic player. I'm a big Sonic fan, but. Am I, am I a speedrunner? No. Am I the best Sonic player of all time? No. I think the problem is as well, and this was, this was me, I was playing it on the Switch, which, just to let you know, the Switch version, of course, compared to other versions like the Xbox and PlayStation, graphically is uh, inferior. It, it's fine, but it's not beautiful like the other, the other games may be to some people. But the final boss battle, uh, there were there was hitching. There was like slight pauses in the middle of the battle, where it's intense. Things happen, and and that really that that shook me up quite a bit. And I was like getting frustrated a little bit. So without that, it was probably a little bit better. But still, boss battles were not my favorite part of this game. And there were some unique stuff, unique bosses, sure. But I felt like they were padded too much compared to other other games that I preferred. So another aspect of Sonic games that I feel uh, we need to weigh in on is replayability for the game. Wanting to go back and either replay parts of it or play it again a different uh, with a different character, things like that, getting all the emeralds, things like that. That was a main focus because generally Sonic games, you know, you play them through and then you can go back and try to try to do better you know get all the rings do different challenges aspects things like that there are different aspects of this game that they built in for replayability and those include things like collecting chaos emeralds which again you become the super form after you collect them all but with each emerald you get an emerald power which allows you to do different things in the stage like you can find hidden platforms you can become a fireball and in you know hit hit different things and, and it's it's kind of it kind of reminded me of the wisp powers a little bit in um sonic colors which is kind of cool but that for me kind of fell short again the emerald powers i only found myself using two or three of the emerald powers and even then going back to the boss fights i felt like the emerald powers were were kind of an excuse to to use them to try to shorten the boss battles so, you know, using one of the powers to, to try to shorten the length of the time. So like the first bot, the, the first Emerald power allows you to have a bunch of different Sonic avatars fly across the screen and be able to hit multiple enemies. Well, it allows you to hit the bosses multiple times at the same time. Uh, in, in times that he, the boss may not be vulnerable for Sonic to be able to hit him. So it, that kind of helps shorten the boss battle a little bit. That was probably the only time I really consistently used the Emerald powers. 
was when I was getting frustrated with the boss battles and wanting them to end, I would try to see how I can use them. Do I think that was a good substitution? Should that, that should that have been the reason why Emerald Powers are in there? No. Do I think it was kind of tacked on? I kind of feel like it was tacked on. That being said, I thought it was interesting that that was one thing. If you if you missed an emerald, kind of like Sonic CD style, where you'd go back in the level and you'd find the specific, um, like the metal Sonic projection that you can destroy, things like that to get the good ending. Kind of like that, where it kind of forced you to to go back and look for them, which is which is cool. I like that, but the actual. I mean, the emerald stages were fine. It was kind of new where you'd, you'd, you'd swing um, and you know, they got progressively harder because the emerald was a little bit faster and uh, you know, it was a little bit harder to, to get to, which again, if we were to compare it to something like Sonic Mania that handled the emeralds better, but anyways. Also for replayability, we're collecting metals in the game where you'd find them whether they were in bonus stages, uh, they were, you know, for, for playing the game, you'd collect medals. And what would have been interesting is if you could use those medals to unlock different, different customizations, different, I don't know, museum pieces, kind of like the, some of the other Sonic games did where you'd unlock artwork, things like that. In this case, the medals were used to unlock body parts for your robot character for multiplayer multiplayer mode which i thought was pretty interesting when i first jumped into it but then pretty got got pretty boring after a while and there's there's a couple of different downsides to this as well jumping into the multiplayer mode you really would have to have a good reason to keep going back and playing the multiplayer mode the metals that's the only thing you can buy are robot body parts and robot body parts are expensive in this game. They're very, very pricey. So that really, you know, once you kind of learn that's what it's for, and depending on how you feel about the multiplayer aspect of it, then it really kind of makes everything fall flat. You don't want to earn medals anymore. You don't really care about it. So the motivation to want to go back and play these stages or play the bonus stages or whatnot and earn medals just goes away. It could have been cool, but it, it, it goes away. What would have been cool, again, you know, different multiplayer modes, um, different things that you could exchange your medals for. If you want to build your, build like a robot character, which again, the, the, some of the body parts are pretty cool where you can do like Metal Sonic and spoilers, maybe spoilers. You could do some other uh, robot characters from from like Sonic R, so like the metal, uh, metal knuckles, things like that. That'd be cool if you could build like your your you know your robot and then use them in, in the game with special powers. That would have been cool, the single player game, but you can't do any of that. And yeah, so that's that's kind of frustrating. So the other thing about replayability is Replaying with all the characters. I have to say, this is my main motivation to replay the game, is to replay with all the different characters that you either have when you start off or unlock um, as you play the game. So different abilities, you know the drill on multiple characters. We've done, we've done this before, where different pads on different levels may be blocked off depending on the character you're, that you're playing. So that inherently is pretty neat. I like that. I'm glad that's in this game. And that's probably my, my main motivation for replaying the game is doing that. And then again, replaying the levels that I do enjoy to hear the music, things like that. You also do have the ability to unlock, well, I should say unlock, pay for and unlock skins. Like I think the Lego skins, skin for Sonic is free. But if you get the uh, digital premium, you get skins for other people. Skins are cool. Those don't really provide me with a lot of uh, motivation to replay the game as those skins. They're kind of neat. I like them, but they're 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 just skins. They're not. They don't have different abilities or anything like that. They're not like bonus characters, which would have been even better. Um, again, with different abilities, that would have been really awesome. 
let's jump into what I did like and what I did not like about this game and some of the things I've already mentioned but let's get into the, what I did not like about this game in general. Okay, this one's a big one. Digital Premium. So, they offered some cool physical things for when you pre-ordered the game. So you, you pre-order the game and you can pre-order it physically in the store or Amazon or whatever and get a couple cool things like a, either like an acrylic stand that I got from Best Buy or you know different different things. Um, that's kind of cool that you, you know, you got to think a couple of the skins, Robotnik, um, Lego skin, things like that. Um, but digital premium is a thing that you only get for, uh, buying the game digitally. You can either get the game, the base game digitally, and then buy the digital premium pack after that for, I think 10 bucks us, or you could buy the digital premium edition, which is again in us is like seventy dollars and you get everything all the skins and whatnot alternative menu pictures which kind of cool but doesn't add anything to the game really so and if you buy bought it physically you'd have to buy the physical edition and then you'd have to get the the digital premium add-on for that to get everything so this whole thing about digital premiums and add-ons and stuff for pre-ordering or, or post with Sonic games that have come out, I, I really don't like that at all. I don't like how they, they force you to do that. I wish that you could just buy the game, maybe maybe some pre-order bonuses, but or like a physical book or something like that. But this whole nickel and diming just for skin packs that don't really add anything to the game but you have the fear of missing out or FOMO. You don't want to. You don't want to buy the incomplete version with, and and you know, in case you want to, you get these skin packs. You don't know because, you know, the game is new, right? So, I I really don't like that whole concept of the digital premium. I get to, I get why it's there. You couldn't buy a physical premium that came with the digital premium stuff. You couldn't do it. You had to buy them both. Which I know is the whole point, but is it just feels feels wrong. I feel I don't like it. Yeah, so that that, that again that really I feels like I feel like that cheapens the brand. It makes me feel like Sonic is just a cash grab, which I know it probably is, and it ha always has been in certain aspects. But <laughs> I still, you know, I've grown up with Sonic, and I love Sonic, and I love the games. I love how they play. Uh, but it just, it feels like it cheapens the brand quite a bit. Um, the other thing too that was very, made it glaringly obvious is that you had Super Mario Wonder released the same week as Sonic Superstars and you bought the game and that's it. The content was there. There's no 15 different editions. You bought it, whether it's physical or digital and you got to play the game and all the stuff was in there. Yeah, so it just kind of shows where the heads of the two companies are at. Also, a thing that I did not like, the Emerald Powers. Again, it just felt tacked on. Not really, f not really fun to use. It felt like, oh, I forgot about this thing, and then you go and, and use it, and then maybe you're rewarded with it. Maybe you're not. The, the, the level itself, too, when, let's say, you're running around, if, it, if there's, like, hidden platforms, it'll actually kind of tell you uh, to, to use a specific power because it's available to you right now. There's something hidden. Um, that's kind of cool, but it just, I did not, I did not care about them. It didn't really, the only thing I cared about them was for the boss battles to try to shorten the length of the boss battles. Um, also kind of a weird thing. I don't know if it, again, it's just me, but um, when you go to activate, the emerald powers it tells you you can hit the two bumpers and deactivate the emerald powers in the middle of that so you can you can kind of reactivate them again again like the wisp power that didn't work for me that did not work for me at all it just doesn't you hit the bumpers and nothing happens it just it runs out of time and you use up the emerald power good thing is they do recharge with every um save post that you go past in the game so uh you don't really have to be without it for too long it does work when you're supersonic, though. 
funny enough. You can you can pause being supersonic, which is just cool. Um, but anyways, another thing that I did not like was the switch performance issues. Uh, I heard this isn't a problem on other platforms, but because I pre-ordered it on a switch and I played it on the switch, there were just the, the load times weren't very good for a modern Sonic game. The the boss battle, the, the hitches, the the, the, the the interruptions while you're playing the game, it just kind of, you know, pauses for, for a quick half second. Uh, it just, it, it was not a great experience in my opinion. It was very noticeable. If it happens and it's not noticeable as much or it's, it doesn't interfere with the game, then that's fine. But it, 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 it directly interfered in boss battles and... I'm not sure if that's been fixed with the patch or whatnot, but uh, when I first played through it, it was uh, it was very annoying, so I did not like that. Also, collecting medals. Uh, I like the process. I like the bonus stages and the stuff. I liked actually collecting medals. I felt like it was a nice reward for things, but the actual payout of using the medals, I thought was just... It wasn't worthwhile. I still don't... Yeah, I mean... And again, in multiplayer, it doesn't give you any advantage or anything like that. You could have, you could spend all of your medals and, and spend all of your time getting medals, and you won't get any advantage in multiplayer. You won't. It just you look different. That was, and that's all it's used for. That just annoys me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's dive into the things that I loved. The controls, again, classic Sonic game controls for the most part. It's back, it's fun to play, it feels good to play. Again, I played the Switch version, uh, Not, I didn't feel any input lag or anything like that. Uh, just great, love love the control. It, it was, that, that could make or break a Sonic game, as we all know. And it felt really great. So, absolutely love that they nailed that. Some of the stage music is very good. Am I going to go out and run and buy the soundtrack for this game? Probably not. Not immediately. It's still, it's still, you know, gaining, gaining on me a little bit. I'm still kind of, you know, listening to it and, I, and, and I'm getting a, a bigger, better appreciation for some of the music. Some of the music was really great. I love it, but some of the music was very, was very Sonic 4 like esque, to the point where it, it brought up it, it just it fell flat for me. So overall level design, I thought it was great. I thought the story you went through the different levels were great. Some of them were de derivative, of course, of older Sonic games, but overall I really liked the level design, and I liked when you were getting towards the end. When when you were when you're playing the last levels and stuff, I thought that was a very interesting uh, choice that they did that for that. I also liked how they had the return of Sonic One bonus stages in a way of collecting medals, and I felt like they they practically they gave you more ability to control Sonic in there, and I, I felt like they fixed it. What I didn't like about the the original bonus stages was I felt like some of it was up to chance. You could really learn the stages and 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 do a great job navigating them, but I felt like I had more fun on those types of bonus stages than I had in the past. Um, also, new character uh, and all all the different returning characters. Love to see it. Love to play a new character. I know some people are like, oh, it's not not any different, not much different. I think it was great, a great addition. Um, yeah, so absolutely love that. In conclusion. I'm simultaneously excited to replay 
some of the levels as certain characters as I go back and go through with Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy. Um, but I'm also pretty sad about the Sonic 4 inspired music. The poor, generally poor multiplayer and collectibles. Uh, nickel and dime DLC premium pack things like that. And then frustrating boss battles. So I feel like the, everybody's going to compare future Sonic, classic Sonic games to Sonic Mania. Uh, because honestly, if you haven't played that, that is Sonic Mania Plus is pretty much the epitome of what classic, great classic Sonic games were and are and could be. It got almost everything right, I feel like, in certain aspects of the game. But the replayability is just not there other than replaying as other characters they had a they had a great opportunity to to bring the other aspects and go go all the way with emerald powers and multiplayer and just i felt like that all fell flat so sega took some risks with this game and i i do applaud them for some of the some of the changes they made that some of the, the the things that they did to make it a new sonic experience but really geared towards the classic Sonic fan. I think they did a they it, they should be commended for for trying something new in that regard, but they didn't really put in any enough meaningful and rewarding changes uh, or experiences that make a classic Sonic game for people to remember for decades to come. So I do have to give Sega some props or trying certain new things with a visual style and just making a new Sonic experience in general and not something to remaster or derivative but I feel like they didn't make enough steps they didn't go far enough to make for, uh, for a re rewarding experience to replay the game to pay full price for the game and have a lot of amazing features that you can keep going back to and playing and generally, I feel like this could have been one of those classic Sonic games that people remember for decades, like the classic Sonic games that we all think back to. Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, Sonic CD, Sonic Mania is a new Sonic classic. This could have been another one of those too, if everything they offered really felt rewarding, but it did not. At least to me. Again, this is all my opinion. So, do I think you should buy this game? I think, as a Sonic fan, yeah, I think you should buy it. However, I think you would probably be wise to buy it during the holiday Black Friday sales, get it on discount, get it for, you know, half off, something like that. I think the $30 to $40 price range would be uh, pretty appropriate for the... Um, premium deluxe edition that has the different skins and things like that full price probably not again it's it's kind of it's kind of sad because I really think they had a great opportunity to go and make a new memorable Sonic game I was really hoping the same week that a great new Mario game came out and I'd have two classic franchises that I could play back to back on my Switch and of course other platforms, but I just felt like Sonic just kind of, you know, it's there, the bones are there, the structure is there, the foundation is there, but the extras, the things that they, they wanted to do differently and, and, and bring on for replayability and as gimmicks, those fell short. Hopefully that helps you decide if you wanted to play this game, if you want to jump in. I personally say, wait till it's on sale. It's not fun. It is a fun game. It is a generally fun game. Take your time with the boss battles. If you need to look up a strategy or two to how to beat it, don't worry. You're not, you're not, you know, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with you for doing that. I hope you had fun today. I hope you had uh, a good time listening to me rant about some of the things I did like, some things I didn't like about Sonic Superstars and my impressions about how it compares to other games and whatnot so again this is all subjective this is all just my opinion you might think it's complete garbage you might think it's a complete classic that's fine but this is just from an opinion of somebody who's grown up with sonic 
in the past and really look forward to the to what Sonic could be as far as classic with sound design, level design, controls, boss fights, and the things that they put in there to make it fun to replay the game. So thank you again for joining me today. Hope you had fun. I'll see you on the next video and game on.